music on the violin and this is considered to be the most ancient form of music in the world and uh, the basic tenets of this music the pillars of this music is rag and tal which is melody and rhythm and uh, and we have uh, I wouldn't Rag literally means something that colors your mind. So the scale that you play. So in India, we had over 4,840 scales. And uh, since this music was never written down, never documented, a lot has been lost. And probably right now, a maximum of 500 to 600 such scales are left musical scales and uh, and yes I play the vocal style of music on the instrument so I try to reproduce vocal music in totality so this is what I do and I'm, I'm ready for some questions if you are if you have any yes 
Yes, let me just check. I don't think I see any questions. So, so the way we train, it's a lot diff uh, favorite rag. I do. I love all rags. Uh, it depends on what is working in my mind at that time. Um, somebody's asked me about my posture and my technique. Uh, yeah. So basically, right now I'm sitting on the sofa. Usually I st sit cross-legged on the floor with uh, the violin on my ankle, the scroll of the violin on my ankle, on my right ankle. So the left leg is folded completely and the right leg is, uh, you know, I sit cross-legged and I bring it forward a bit. And I place the scroll on my ankle like this, here, and then uh, I put my violin beneath my collarbone here, and I balance it out. So when I do it this way, my hands are free, and I put it on my ankle, and my neck is free. So that speaks of my posture and about my left hand yes the left hand technique i use a lot of glides and slides um, and as as indian music i would call the music is not on the notes as it is in the west it's in between the notes so there's a lot of microtones working for every scale so every scale uh, every note uh, uh, might be um, a little, I would say, uh, you have microtone, so it's a little low, it's a little high. I can give you an example to show you, uh, which I will do soon. And my tuning is something which only I do this, not everybody. I've used viola strings on my violin because it's not like in the West where you are playing in an orchestra, this is solo means it's just me as the violin player with the percussion instrument performing a three hour concert. So it's very hard to, if it's very high pitched, it's going to be hard for people to listen to. So I brought down the pitch of the violin, I use viola strings, but I tune them differently. So I use a three fourth size viola string and I have, uh, I moved up the C up to D, the G up to A, that's D again, that's A again. So A, D, A, D. That's what I did. So. And the tuning does not change much uh, because uh, our, uh, we do not play from different uh, pitches. Like we do not play from C, we do not play from D. So everything that we play, like I play from D. So anything I play, will I'll be playing it from D and I'll be transposing it in my mind. So that's how I play. And... Uh, Yes, let me see what more. Some musicians and artists that inspire you and your music. Uh, a lot of people. It's just not one. I li when I listen to a lot of musicians, there are a lot of things which stay in my mind from a particular musician's music and which comes out as my own when I play and then I realize oh my god this is what I heard and uh, 
and it it comes out as my something of my own so yes but in indian music there are two artists one is my uh, teacher pandit jasraj then there is um, a very great singer called kishori amongkar who is no more and uh, then there is of course ustad zakir hussain who have inspired me uh, any different from karnatak music yes both the styles are totally different in the sense they still have rag and tal but all the uh, scales the rags are different in karnatak some some are the same but they have different names and uh, the technique is different the form is different the presentation is different everything is different so that is a totally different classical system altogether in india we have two different classical systems one is hindustani and one is karnatak and uh, hindustani has more leeway for improvisation which karnatak music does not have uh, there is way uh, leeway for improvisation there but more structured and hindustani gives you a lot of independence to do to uh, play within a structure yeah and um, uh thank you jim is jimmy thank you jimmy so the best way to learn these ornaments is to practice some exercises so i have uh, I think one of the exercises that you could do is this. The slide. If you see when I played the E to F, I did not I switched fingers but you didn't know. You see? F to G you want uh, figure out me switching fingers that's what i do so this is one exercise and then playing on one string all in one finger and then with different so i i use all these things and then as you learn you start picking up more and more ornamentations so yes yes morizio i am thinking of d or a as the root of the ra yes that is my tonic yes some of the common rags are um, um what is so we start with bhairav so the scale is this so this we start with this this is called bhairav then we go to the flats and the sharps everything is covered with these four and then we have pentatonic scales 
like so like this we have many many scales and then uh, then we have scales like uh, five in the ascending six in the descending or seven in the descending like This is five and seven. Uh, the names of the four main rags are Bhairav, B H A I R A V. Maybe I could uh, type it. Uh, Bhairav, Bhairav. Coffee and these four uh, rags kind of uh, bring in all the notes that you need to learn, and then uh, then we have uh, um, then we have different more main rags, but these four just bring in all the notes. So these are first taught to kids. In the beginning and then we go into pentatonic scales and then uh, five and seven six and seven five in the ascending six in the descending or six in the ascending five in the descending it depends we have many scales like that and then the the basic way how we start uh, developing on improvisation is like we have Oh, this is another scale which is very very important, the major scale. So it's called Bilawal. This also. This is the major so. So this one too is we work on this too. So so we start creating our, our own exercises. <laughs> Something like this, you can create your own exercises, and uh, in these patterns. Um, Basically, this is something I've created. So, keeping the first note as your constant, you get, you will get six different patterns, and then keeping the second, uh, like if you play, if this is the first note. exercises when we keep on playing this and we memorize them later on when we have to improvise it becomes very easy for us and it, it this in, includes playing the uh, these uh, I mean playing includes all these uh, uh, variations in different different scales like for example you have the major scale you have the natural fourth. Now, just maintaining the natural fourth and switching between the flat and the sharps of you're going to get, uh, I would say, 16 scales. Just keeping the the G as the constant, natural, G natural. Then. Keeping this as the, as the constant, and when you keep changing, whatever, 
you do all those changes, you're going to get another 16 scales. So you have 32 scales already to practice. And then, uh, then you have uh, these uh, variations and the patterns that you can create on your own and you work on them. So when you get, when you master these things, then improvisation becomes very easy, which is why an Indian musician always improvises. It doesn't have a problem with improvisation. And uh, the other thing is, uh, yes, about the microtones that I was talking. So we have the same 12 notes as it is in Western music, but the only thing is the, uh, the quarter tones and whatever that we have, uh, I will show you a scale which has all that. So, let's go to So this, so we have scales for the morning, for the afternoon, for the evening, for the night. We have different, different scales. So I'm going to show you how the same note sounds different in the morning and in the evening. Uh, 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 so, so this is because of using you, the use of microtones. So. In, in, in Indian music, it's considered that um, music has a connection with nature and the physiology of the individual. So which is why rags, which, are, which literally means coloring the mind, scales which color the mind, so they have an impact on how you feel. So one of the scales, I talked about Bhairav. So, now hear this note, okay, now I'm going to go to an evening scale which has the same flat second but you're going to hear the microtones now this rag is called shri did you hear the shruti did you hear the change now called in Indian music, these have a connection with nature and the physiology of the individual and it determines how you feel after listening to a particular scale. So the morning scale is more, I would say, spiritual prayer, devotion, you know, when I, when, if I play that rag for some time you will feel it and in the evening it's more melancholic, it's more like uh, getting, uh, you just want to be with yourself. So I, the way I look at it is morning, you're up, you're bright, you know, you're ready for the day. And in the morning when you get up, first thing you want to do is, you know, 
take some time for yourself and be in prayer or something you know just to and then in the evening you you back from work you you tired and then this the way the no the note is it's lower than the flat second in the evening and is higher a bit higher than the proper place of the flat second in the morning so this speaks of how it determines how you how the note determines how you feel during the day yeah and what else was i asked ah when did the violin first get introduced to indian music so basically we had instruments which i would call as ancestors to the violin which are played with the with the bow so it was first called uh, dhanur veena so every instrument is called the veena and it's any stringed instrument and the bowed instrument was called dhanu bow bow literally in sanskrit in india means dhanu so dhanur veena the one which is played with the bow the veena which is played with the bow so it is called dhanur veena and this i'm talking of 5000 years ago and then later on um, i think in the 6th or 7th century ad in india uh, when the arabs came in for trade they took our instrument by that time it got renamed as ravan hatta and it became a folk instrument that was played with the bow and if i have to see the difference of what ravan hatta was and what the violin is today the ravan hatta is even there in india today it's a round hollow body with just one string and played with a bow and our fingerboard is five and a half inches long and it has four strings covering three octaves that fingerboard is 22 inches long and has one string covering three octaves so it's the same thing we have the, what we play in four strings here five and a half into four is 22 so i feel that probably was the ancestor and the arabs took it to your uh, to to persia they called it rababe and i hear in when the invasion of the moors happened in spain this instrument this rababe went there and it became the viola and then went into europe and became the viola and then the violin and in the 17th century the british when they were ruling india brought it back and it's been there from the 17th century so ah uh, my early training in musical journey i come from a family of musicians and uh, i am the seventh generation in my family <coughs> and uh, um i started violin uh when i was i started violin when i was just 2 2 and a half years old and uh my life has uh, it has been a very dis- i have lived a very disciplined life of practice uh, which is why i think i am where i am today so and my grandfather was strict with me seeing that i practiced and everything and from the age of 12 i've been performing and and what there what else do i say a lot of practice that's all i've done are those microtones and their variations different in each region of india uh no the in classical music no it's the same in each region and uh, uh we have different forms if light classical music folk music practice uh, practice about 
five to six hours daily uh, for a period of uh, 15 to 20 years or even more that's what I've done and uh, listening to a lot of music and also um, and also improving my um, my knowledge in music these are things that I've done and I still keep doing so it's never ending I still feel I've just scratched the surface there's a lot more I have I can do hi woman how are you yes how much do I sing now when you when I practice uh, I sing when I teach but I, you, I, when I learn something, when I compose something, then I do it by singing. And then I play it on the violin. So that's what I do. Some music. Okay. Uh, would you want to listen to a scale for this time of the day? So I think that's better. Play something. I do, I do have uh, special techniques which I play and that can be used in, in the western musical context too, the technique that I use, it can be used there, it's just that uh, one has to uh, sit and practice it, that's it. Uh, some music, so this rag is called Shuddha Sarang. And it is for this time of the day. And that I 
I played had a lot of improvisation. And what kind of notation do I use? I don't use any notation. So as I said, Indian music has never been documented. It's all been um, stuff where you learn from your teacher, you hear and play. And uh, so that's what I follow. And uh, when I compose too, I just uh, compose and then I record it. And then now I've found, found a way of writing my music myself, but I don't think anybody will understand it except me. So <laughs> that's what it is. So basically, this uh, the way you play the scale is... <laughs> fourth the natural fourth and the raised fourth both you have coming for, uh, following one another but in the ascending you do not have the natural fourth you have the raised fourth so you have to maintain that all the time <laughs> fourth in the descending in the ascending you can only use the raised fourth so you'll have to use that the tuning is uh, D A D A or A D A D that's what I use this rag is called Shuddha Sarang uh, let me type it Shuddha Sarang yes that's the rag yeah I'm just looking. Uh, yes. Yes. So, like you have the composition was. Uh, I'll try and sing some for you to know what I do when I say I play vocal music on the violin. So it's like this. Jao ji jao shan chaliya Jao ji jao shan So if I'm playing if I'm singing this if I have to play this on the violin <laughs> So wherever there are syllables, that's where I play. That's where I bow. So So, you could have More man ki na jaane jaane So, all that would be in one bow. Music of 
the the music that i play it starts off very slow where i am it's like i have this scale so this is a scale and now now i have to develop on this scale it's all improvisation so note by note i develop it's like you can imagine that um i have certain colors given to me and i'm supposed to create a painting so whatever i feel at that moment of time is what will be created so if i'm if i'm going to make a portrait how would i make it i mean probably i'd start with the eyes and the eyebrows and the nose so it's or the whole music is like that so it starts off note by note i develop the scale so this development can happen uh, like it could be done in 3 minutes or it could be done i could go on for about an hour developing the scale note by note and without being repetitive in my phrasing so it depends on my mood and how i feel and then rhythmically we start building it up so this is total without any uh, rhythm in it the first movement the first movement is called ala where we do this without any development I mean without any rhythmic development and then the second movement is called bol tan where we use rhythm so and then then we come to tan which is uh, Uh, developing taking it further fa faster and faster till we get to a crescendo so we have three to four moments like that and developing it sometimes i can do it in I can do the whole thing for about an hour and a half just one scale should the saran i can play for an hour and a half or i can just finish it in 3 minutes it's all up to me how i feel what i want to do but i have to follow certain rules and that is all i do and the rules are stick to um, uh, the rules of the rag and then stick to uh, the rhythmic cycle so in uh, classical music has many different cycles like uh, of you know 16 beat cycle which is a 4 4 or uh, uh, 10 beat cycle 7 beat cycle 9 beat cycle so uh okay the four moments ala boltan or jod boltan is what a vocalist would use and jod is what an instrumentalist would call it and then uh tan or jhala is the fast speed again tan is what an in indian uh vocalist would call and jhala is what an instrumentalist would call it so the technique of bowing and using slides from your ornaments how and from okay this playing according to uh, the syllables bowing according to the syllables i learned i i figured it out myself because if i wanted to be close to vocal music i had to do something and some of the slides for, uh, of the ornaments the ornamental slides that i do some of them the technique is my own and some i got from my grandfather he taught me so so half of it is what i have developed trying i'm still trying I'm, you know listening and figuring out which how which would sound close to the voice what what would sound close to the voice which finger if i used would sound good for this phrasing so it's that's how i've been doing it yeah yes it is all phonetical 
Yeah. So in, in, in Indian music, our ears are considered to be our eyes. Like, like you read music in the West, our ears, we need sharp ears to hear all the microtones. So we say that our ears are our eyes. So yes, show me more of practice exercises for rag than practice for a rag you're less familiar with. Concept of tetrachords exists in classical music. Okay. So uh, exercises for uh, for rags that I'm not familiar with. So in my uh, as far as uh, my practice goes, I've always practiced with scales which have all the notes in it, like all the seven notes, ascending and descending. And but it could be flat or sharp. It could be flat uh, in the ascending and descending. It could be natural. It doesn't matter. That's how I practice. Uh, pentatonic scales and no scales with five and seven, uh, uh, five in the ascending, seven in the descending and all. I have not practiced any exercises because when you do the exercises for all these seven note scales, it becomes very easy. It becomes one with yourself when you have to practice the other scales it becomes easier so by that time you're ready to you've got a hang of how you need to approach the scale and uh, it becomes easier and basically when you play this alap slow note note by note delineation of the rag the rag actually opens up to you you have a vision as to how you could navigate in the scale so but it's a slow process, it takes time. And for someone who wants to study and practice in this honey, they should. I think you should get a teacher who knows, uh, who can teach you well, because Indian music is basically passed on from teacher to the student. Studying uh, from rec uh, recordings and treatises comes later. In the beginning, you have to go to someone to learn. Yeah. Uh, I think I've answered everything. Is there anything I missed? So somebody asked me about tetrachords we do not have any scale so to create a rag you have to have five notes in the sn at least a minimum of five notes that is when it is a musical scale four notes can only be a phrase it cannot be a scale so we do not use tetrachords in in, in indian music so Thank you all. Is that, is that it? Should I say bye now? Thank you all. See you soon sometime. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, woman. Uh, we're coming another we're coming out with another album, Bikram and I. We're working on it right now, Michael. A little more. What do I play now? Okay, let me see what I can play.
one second.